Last hour uh, we looked at the problem of radio communication and the problem of building suitable transmitters and receivers and uh, the point we stopped with was the type of modulation how do we put uh, useful information on top of our uh, radio frequency signal and the most straightforward solution was amplitude modulation AM uh, could be obtained this even with a mechanical generator uh, electromechanical generator and a serious connected carbon microphone as the simplest possible transmitter we could uh, reproduce this similar things today uh, we could do things a little bit more efficient for higher frequencies but still amplitude modulation and uh, once people uh, have a solution for for a certain problem it's hard to persuade people that there may be more uh, more efficient solutions to do the same thing uh, since here we had the solution for the transmitter we also had many different solutions for the receiver uh, including the best solution and the best solution was probably the heterodyne receiver but we also have for amplitude modulation also we had very simple receiver like, receivers like the super regenerative receiver this can also work with analog amplitude modulation can be used for speech so this thing all these things work now when all this is known is very difficult to persuade people that things can be done actually better than we had here things can, could be done better and we really have to look at the theory how to do things better uh, how to use perhaps a different kind of modulation since we had all the problems solved actually here and now a solution that was not that straight word for was frequency modulation or in other words phase modulation if we are using a sine wave a, sinus, a sinusoidal modulation signal then uh, frequency modulation and phase modulation are all the same and in fact in a good perform uh, well performing uh, frequency modulated transmitter we are actually using phase modulation if we apply phase modulation to our signal uh, Armstrong was doing this in 1935 with a such with a coil with a saturated core uh, nowadays uh, coils with saturated cores require require pretty large amounts of power to operate so this phase modulation is actually today is nowadays phase modulation is mostly performed by varactor diodes by varactors varicap diodes to have uh, electrically adjustable phase shifters to impose phase modulation phase modulation is already frequency modulation because if we look at the equations uh, this uh, 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 this is the mo uh, the modulation is this sine function here we actually get uh, a cosine in the uh, immediate frequency uh, of the output signal so we actually modulated the frequency uh, because uh, the frequency is actually the derivative of of the phase so it's a simple mathematical relationship in between uh, the problem of such a transmitter is that this phase modulation cannot be made for very large phase angles okay we can make larger phase angles by concatenating many identical phase modulator stages one behind another but still uh, the deviation the frequency deviation delta f we obtain out of it is uh, not very large so Armstrong had this very clever idea to apply phase modulation at a relatively low frequency in say the 500 kilohertz range and then multiply this by a number of multiplier stages not just one multiplier stage uh, by a number of multiplier stages by an n an n may be in the range of between 20 and 100 uh, if we apply here multiply sta multiplier stages we also with multiplier stages will multiply the phase angle and we also multiply the deviation so with a limited amount of phase modulation we can take here we can have an arbitrarily large frequency deviation if we apply many 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 multiplier stages here frequency multiplication 
So as an example, if I have uh, frequency multiplication by 48, 48 um, uh, can be reduced down to simple multiplier stages by 3, by 2, by 2, by 2 and so on. So by 3, by 2, by 2, uh, by 3, uh, then multiplied by 2 is 6 times, again uh, doubler uh, 12, again doubler 24, again doubler 48 times. So it's all simple low order multiplication stages here with simple filters. But the change of these stages and this Armstrong actually built such stages and uh, we obtain quite uh, from a modulation frequency of 1 kilohertz coming from the microphone and a phase modulator that can do plus minus 1 radian we can do that with varactors plus minus 1 radian phase modulation we can obtain the final deviation of plus minus 48 kilohertz here 48 kilohertz is already a good deviation say for radio broadcast for good, good quality radio cost. Such transmitter may contain a large number of stages, but uh, its design is quite simple because no automatic level control is required. So it's not a, not really a circuit that has complex feedback loops inside the circuit. Uh, and further, there is further an advantage of making phase modulation in place of direct frequency modulation is that this uh, deviation is actually proportional to the modulation frequency. So we have frequency proportional deviation, modulation frequency proportional deviation, and that's also called pre-emphasis inside uh, an FM transmitter. And this is very useful to improve the signal to noise ratio inside the receiver. This uh, provides a much better signal to noise ratio inside the receiver. And uh, of course, uh, the, of course, in the receiver, you have to do the opposite operation is just a low pass filter, an additional single stage low pass filter for the de emphasis inside the receiver. But this improves very much the quality of frequency modulation. Very simple uh, transmitter, not in the number of the components, but in the kind of operations. We only have simple operations here. No complex operation, no feedback loop inside the uh, frequency modulated transmitter. But uh, the most important point does not come from the transmitter, it comes inside the receiver. In a heterodyne FM receiver, we amplify the incoming RF signal, filter first the image rejection, we do the image rejection bandpass filter here, then we do the modulation uh, filtering, so we apply a filter that has that exactly the same bandwidth as our incoming signal. We do IF amplification, but after that we do limiting. So all the information of our signal is only included in the phase, not in the envelope, not in the immediate amplitude of this signal. So we can uh, so the amplitude of the signal or the envelope of the signal may only contain interference, may only contain contain noise and we can remove all this interference with a limiter amplifier. This is just an amplifier operating in class C so that its open output voltage remains the same regardless of the input voltage within the gain range of this amplifier. So a limiter may remove uh, many unwanted interference from this signal many noise can in, uh, remove and so this is actually we already have some processing here and this signal processing actually improves our output signal to noise ratio in the loudspeaker uh, finally we have to measure the frequency with a, an fm discriminator with two, tu two tuned am the modulators on one slightly higher and one slightly lower than the uh, input frequency with two detectors and a low pass filter to remove any any anything that remains out of the IF frequency and this difference here this is actually called such a different circuit is usually called usually called an FM discriminator and we uh, bring this data to the loudspeaker uh, this uh, audio to the loudspeaker or we have data transmission we just derive the data here and in the transmitter we put the data in here so we can also use this for digital communication not just for for analog voice communication here 
So the trick is really this non-linear signal processing inside here. And uh, what is the bandwidth of such a signal? A bandwidth of this uh, RF signal here is uh, actually twice the sum of the maximum modulation frequency and the maximum frequency deviation. This is the Carson's rule for 89% uh, 98% uh, of contains 98% of the power spectrum of the signal. So the signal uh, bandwidth may be much larger. In the case of the AM transmitter we had up here. Uh, so with the AM transmitter the signal bandwidth was just twice uh, the modulation frequency, so both upper and lower side bands of the AM transmitter. Now the bandwidth is much larger, the bandwidth also contains the deviation and uh, with a wider band signal for the same information being transmitted, we may obtain some advantage in the receiver, we may improve the signal to noise ratio with the suitable circuits like we saw here. The suitable circuits can improve the uh, the signal to noise ratio. So frequency modulation actually uses a wider bandwidth uh, but a wider bandwidth with a uh, very reliable transmitter, uh, a receiver that has some processing and a much better signal to noise ratio at the output. So uh, uh, frequency modulation has some uh, has some real technical advantages for a high quality audio transmission uh, but it was invented late much later than uh, amplitude modulation because simply as uh, we had a working system with amplitude modulation no one ever thought that uh, we could do do it better in a different way so Armstrong invented this and patented this in 1935 but it took uh, almost 20 years for the system to be practically uh, practically used in many circuit, uh, circuits uh, in the, in the, for broadcasting. It took almost 20 years. In fact, the first use of the Armstrong invention was only after 10 years in the Second World War when this kind of communication was used in tanks for communication between tanks on the battlefield. And with tanks you don't really need good audio quality. You don't really need this processing because in tanks uh, in tanks everything is very noisy so it only made it to broadcasting it uh, met fierce opposition from the industry that had large investments in uh, AM broadcasting and uh, that's the reason why it was slowly applied on the other hand we could also try to reduce the bandwidth uh, frequency modulation uses a wider bandwidth amplitude modulation uses twice the bandwidth of the baseband signal Maybe we could do it uh, better in another way, say if spectrum is precious and if we don't want to waste power in unnecessary carriers and or unwanted sidebands. And we can do that with single sideband amplitude modulation. So single sideband amplitude modulation, we have both, usually we have both the transmitter and the receiver built as heterodyne circuit. So we are using the heterodyne principle also in the transmitter. We perform the modulation at the intermediate frequency and at this same intermediate frequency we filter out the unwanted sideband and we filter out the unwanted carrier because nor the unwanted sideband nor the carrier provide us useful communication. We concentrate all our transmitted power on in the desired bandwidth, so the bandwidth of the transmitted signal is equal to the baseband signal and we have no power lost in carriers. So that's a particularly important advantage if we want to go spectrum efficient, so we only transmit one, very, uh, one, one side bit, and if we want to go power efficient, so all of the power of our transmitter is only used for the useful sidebed. But of course we have disadvantages. The output stage of a single sideband transmitter now has to be linear at least class B but not class C so we need a very linear transmitter and with automatic level control in the transmitter. Uh, since this is an amplitude modulation we also need an automatic gain control inside the receiver 
so also the receiver is not that straightforward and that uh, foolproof as an FM receiver an FM receiver does not require AGC because we have a limiter here a limiter can work with any any amplitude of the output signal so this here AGC was not required here AGC is required and we have another uh, very strict requirement about the frequency accuracy of all oscillators so all oscillators used in our circuit uh, must have very stable frequencies say a stability of plus minus 10 hertz for voice communication is desired if the oscillators uh, shift as much as plus minus 100 hertz uh, the practical effect on the voice transmitted is that plus minus 100 hertz changes a male voice into a female voice or a female voice into a male voice so this is already a huge distortion of the voice being transmitted over the system uh, that's the reason why single sideband amplitude modulation is usually limited to very low uh, radio frequency signals usually below 30 megahertz only uh, radio amateurs are using single side bed at higher frequencies and all have to use very stable oscillators very good crystal filters in the IF to remove the unwanted sideband because the unwanted sideband and the unwant uh, it's very close to the carrier and used perfectly balanced mix modulators and demodulators modulators to remove also the carrier the carrier is already removed in a balanced modulator here so we don't have this this unwanted carrier here but anyway the system as it is works under this condition the system works so it can achieve much better performance much better radio range than an, uh, an, a standard amplitude modulation with both side bands and carrier now to compare the performance of all three possible modulations let's make a drawing so we draw the logarithm of the input signal to noise ratio at the RF side and we draw the logarithm of the signal to noise ratio after the modulation at the audio frequency side uh, in the single sideband receiver with this last uh, demodulation uh, this oscillator being used here we also called it a bit frequency oscillator because this frequency beats with the input signal this is just uh, uh, detail I hope now what uh, how do things happen the most simple uh, case is the single side band modulation with no carrier one side band and no carrier and this is just a straight line at 45 degrees so uh, a single side band demodulator like this one here with a bit frequency oscillator that it's all linear signal processing for for the signal uh, this processing is just frequency shift here but no non-linear processing no limiting so this is just a line at 45 degrees so with single side band we have no effect of the demodulator on the signal to noise ratio but with other modulations things are different with amplitude modulation that has a carrier we brought ca uh, we transmitted we transmit some of the power inside the unwanted carrier so we actually don't want this carrier but we are going if we are going to transmit it then we need some of the transmitter power also to transmit the carrier and there is a certain loss here this loss may amount between 5 and 10 dB so this is quite quite uh, expensive in terms of transmitter power here uh, further there is an additional problem uh, uh, product detector here the product uh, the modulator with a BFO it's linear processing so it works with any signal to noise ratio where the amp AM, AM amplitude modulator uh, requires a sufficient signal to noise ratio on the RF side to be able to extract the carrier if the carrier cannot be extracted then the demodulator operation breaks down and also the output signal to ratio, uh, signal to noise ratio broke down very very steeply so AM has this further problem of this threshold threshold uh, we can make the modulators that have extended their threshold down here but we always have a threshold always the breakdowns uh, the breakdowns uh, the, uh, the breakdown occurs at some uh, at some signal to noise ratio this may be with an extended threshold the modulator may be shifted to lower signal to noise ratio uh, adding adding very much to the complexity of the circuit such the modulators are very complex circuits 
So AM is actually, from all points of view, is a very bad uh, modulation. It uh, takes lots of signal power, poor power efficiency, and also not very good uh, spectrum efficiency. And especially poor the modulated signal to noise ratio, and that's that's bad for broadcast when where people want to listen to quality music, not to to bad uh, modulation. Uh, on the other hand, frequency modulation is actually to provide gain, FM gain that's proportional to the modulation index of the frequency modulation, where the modulation index is actually the deviation divided by the maximum modulation frequency. Uh, this mod index of modulation Armstrong suggested 5 uh, then people this uh, restricted to 2 and even less than 2 but 5 was his idea and 5 provides really a very high FM gain here of uh, almost 19 dB that's, uh, that's very important for high quality broadcast for music broadcast so FM is uh, a very good system as long as we are above threshold. Also with frequency modulation, the threshold without any special uh, uh, special uh, measures, uh, the FM threshold is around 10 dB. We need a 10 dB uh, radio frequency signal to noise ratio to get an excellent uh, audio frequency signal to noise ratio. So from this 10 dB, we almost get 30 dB here due to the high uh, f FM gain we have here for the typical uh, typical figures for FM broadcast where modulation frequency is up to 15 kilohertz and the deviation is plus minus 75 kilohertz if you put these figures in here so frequency modulation may provide very qu high quality broadcast uh, at the expense of a slightly wider bandwidth. In fact, frequency modulation it is so good that even today it is difficult to replace with uh, various digital formats like digital audio broadcast. Uh, mono, uh, mono FM transmission is certainly still today the best solution. The problem of FM is that uh, years going on they added uh, unnecessary features like stereo transmission, like uh, like uh, 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 additional data transmission over the, uh, the same FM channel and this degraded the signal to noise ratio but the original FM uh, single channel mono mono transmission FM is certainly the best solution to transmit audio uh, then we may think uh, since these transmitters for single sideband are quite complicated they require expensive components like crystal filters they require okay we always need high quality oscillators uh, we need uh, ALC, we need AGC how to make uh, single side band AM simpler not complicated as here but make it simpler uh, because it is uh, uh, single side band is interesting for weak signal communication weak signal communication when we are at the edge of the coverage of our signal and it's, we still want to have some uh, some useful signal to noise ratio even if it's less than 10 dB but voice usually can get through down to even smaller values than this and the idea is that we do not remove our image with a crystal filter but we remove our image with an image rejection, mod image rejection modulator an image reject modulator should have two mixers or uh, similar mixers operated uh, in quadrature, so operated at 90 degrees phase shift and we need uh, one phase shift uh, sorry, one phase shift in the, on the input audio signal and the other phase shift on the output radio frequency signal so this phase shift is not difficult to achieve because this is narrowband uh, it's very close to the frequency of the oscillator but the audio frequency phase shift is difficult to achieve because this 90 degrees has to span the whole range of the audio modulation frequency from 300 Hz through the 3300 Hz if we are talking about voice, uh, voice signals. So this is more difficult to perform and in such a transmitter design if we have inaccurate quadrature so if the mixers are not identical 
or if the phase shifts are not exactly the 90 degrees especially this wide band phase shift that's difficult to make so an inaccurate, inaccurate quadrature results in transmitting the unwa an unwanted sideband and this is maybe, uh, maybe causing interference to other users so we don't want to do this um, such a transmitter maybe has a, a rejection of the unwanted sideband in the 30 to 40 dB range so between 30 and 40 dB while crystal filters are maybe able to do much better and maybe able to reject the unwanted sideband by 80 dB so they maybe can be made much better than than an image rejection mixer but in theory things could be made perfect if we, if we use some adaptive uh, circuitry here like digital signal processing and we shall talk more about that later on perhaps in the next lecture sideband selection is simply done by flipping one of the signs here of the, these two signals that we are summing to remove either one sideband or the other sideband to remove and we are left only with one sideband uh, carrier rejection is already done by in the balanced modulators here we have carrier rejection we can make a very similar transmitter a very similar transmitter a very similar receiver that has a, a similar image rejection mixer uh, needs two identical multipliers here uh, needs a wide band audio frequency shifter that's also difficult to build uh, again we are limited between minus 30 and minus 40 dB of unwanted sideband rejection that means uh, interference from the unwanted sideband in the receiving side but uh, on the other hand we do not need much filtering here we need filtering here in the audio frequency range to remove interference outside our desired audio band uh, but in the radio frequency range we do not need actually much filtering here this filtering can be very simple or could be even absent we could even do it without any filtering here the receiver is able to operate without this filtering so we do not have any complex filters here like we had uh, in the in the traditional uh, single sideband reception we had a very expensive and complex crystal filter here so now we have almost no filtering at all this is one of the possibilities how we can make single sideband transmission uh, with quadrature mixer quadrature modulator in the transmitting side and this very similar side uh, similar circuit uh, in image reject mixer uh, an image reject modulator in the transmitter and image reject mixer in the receiver that are both very similar circuit circuits using very similar components also very similar components here uh, of course since it's uh, uh, we require a linear output stage we require at least class B in the output stage we require automatic level control in the transmitter and we still require automatic gain control in the receiver maybe a small detail about the receiver an interesting detail we may use most of the gain in the audio frequency amplifier we can decrease this radio frequency gain just to keep up the noise figure of the receiver but use the least amount of RF gain as we can do it and put most of the gain in the ampli uh, audio frequency amplifier and put also the AGC into the audio frequency amplifier so this is uh, uh, something that is cannot be shown on this picture that we have most of the gain here we have very little gain in the RF stage uh, for all this uh, this is a kind also could be called a homodyne receiver but but a homodyne receiver is a very unprecise term so I prefer not to use it some people call it homodyne receiver in homodyne receivers uh, you perform the filtering in the audio frequency range or in the uh, signal bandwidth and you perform also most of the amplification in the audio fre frequency range we have very little amplification in the radio frequency range uh, now uh, another application of quadrature modulation and the modulation is to use quadrature amplitude modulation so put both signals i and q that have a maximum modulation frequency of mode put them on the same carrier but the one carrier is in, is in phase is cosine and the other phase is, the other carrier is, is, is in 
it is in quadrature is the sign with the sign term. Uh, putting this into a transmission channel on the receiving side, we can separate both i and q by simply multiplied by cosine at sine again. If we can keep the generator synchronized here. Of course, I didn't say anything about synchronization here. And then with simple low pass filters, I remove unwanted frequencies. I get just i and q here. Well, if you work out the equations, uh, cosine squared is 1 one half plus one half cosine of the second harmonic so the one half comes in here and the one half comes in here but this is just a gain factor uh, please uh, remember that this gain factor here uh, we may have additional transmission loss in the transmission channel so in this way maybe we could uh, send uh, information that has a bandwidth of twice f mode in twice f mode the bandwidth on the radio frequency channel. So, uh, quadrature amplitude modulation has a very good uh, spectrum efficiency. We don't, we are not losing anything. All the spectrum we are using, we are getting in the bandwidth of our signals. We are not transmitting a carrier uh, here, uh, and the two sidebands contain independent information. Though this independent information is not I and Q yet, we still have to perform this operation here. So quadrature amplitude modulation is a solution for efficient systems. And now let's see how quadrature modulation is done in a very tricky way in a single sideband transmitter and receiver. And this is the Weaver method of making a single sideband. We first uh, uh, convert our audio frequency signal uh, with a quadrature mixer uh, this is actually audio frequency the oscillator is 1.8 kHz it's just in the middle of this frequency band why is this selection uh, made for single side band voice transmission there is a very simple uh, there is a very important feature of human voice human voice okay it covers 300 Hz to 3.3 kHz but in the middle of this band, around 1.10 kHz, the frequencies present in the middle of this band contribute very little for the understanding of the speech. So we could have, uh, we could remove this part of the audio frequency spectrum, or we can have a gap in here, and that gap does not cause any problems. And then we upconvert this signal to the radio frequency. Well, so this is radio frequency with the radio frequency local oscillator F0 is our carrier frequency. Uh, here we have two signals that are only one and a half kilohertz wide. They are no longer corresponding to our voice. But if we modulate them up in the described fashion with this quadrature mixer with 90 degrees phase shift, we obtain exactly a single side band modulation that's com perfectly compatible with all single side band signals. This is com compatible with this system here, or it's also com compatible with this kind of receiver here. So with image rejection or with crystal filters, if we do single side band, we com obtain a completely compatible system and we are not using any difficult components here. Uh, so uh, here we have no difficult components because these phase shifts are performed on the oscillator frequencies and oscillator frequencies are fixed frequencies so it's very easy to get uh, an exact 90 degrees phase shift or in other words we could uh, put this oscillator at a multiple of this frequency use some uh, frequency division with counters and then obtain digitally an exact 90 degrees phase shift so these are very easy to perform here this is simple for to perform this is simple to perform the only issue we have to keep balance uh, exactly the same use exactly two identical mixers here two identical multipliers here if here we have inaccurate quadrature uh, this inaccurate quadrature results in audio distortion. Here we have uh, neighbor channel interference in the unwinded sideband. Here we have audio distortion. Uh, so the imperfect mixers uh, now no longer cause uh, 
crosstalk from the neighboring channel, but rather distort the, the, our own signal. So our own signal gets distorted if this, this quadrature is not perfect here. Uh, the weaver receiver is exactly the same. The weaver receiver is exactly the same uh, as we have it here. Weaver side single side band receiver is exactly the same, uh, and we have uh, the same radio frequency quadrature mixer here, and then we have an audio frequency quadrature mixer here. We do everything in the reverse order now here. And the most interesting of all, after all this filtering, we don't need any low pass here in front of the audio, audio amplifier. Even with this solution here, we could, uh, also in a Weaver single sideband receiver, we may have very little RF gain. We put most of the gain in an audio, audio frequency amplifier, or we put some gain here in the IF frequency. So we could also put gain in here. But uh, we have to be careful, we need uh, AGC here and we also need a linear signal processing, so LSE here and class B output stage, at least class B output stage, better class A output stage. So we still need all these things, sideband selection is very simple here, uh, we need AGC. Uh, uh, what is most interesting, uh, Weaver uh, invented this thing already in 1956. And this, although this, uh, the, this is also called the third method of generating and demodulating single sideband, it was not particularly, uh, uh, particularly popular because other methods were already present. Other methods like, uh, uh, like the method with using crystal filters, uh, there were already many radios built with crystal filters. There were some radios built with image rejection mixers, modulators and mixers. And this was the third method. It came a little bit late. And it took 40 years for this method to be applied no longer for voice communication, but for any kind of numerical or digital communication in the zero IF receivers. So receivers with the zero intermediate frequency. This was the really important step to be done, an important step in radio communication. Why? We will see this on the next picture. Well, this diagram looks even more complicated. The zero IF quadrature amplitude modulation receiver can be used both for analog transmission like Weaver. Weaver is analog and we, it can be used for many digital kinds. How to build this receiver here for quadrature amplitude modulation? How to build this one? How to practically build it? And the solution is the zero IF principle. The zero IF principle here is similar to Weaver. With uh, the input bandwidth is uh, actually multiplied by an oscillator, local oscillator is mixed by a local oscillator that operates exactly in the center of the bandwidth of the transmitter signal. So the ideally uh, the frequency of the transmitter and the frequency of the receiver local oscillator should be exactly the same. So homodyne, this is also homodyne, but we see that under the term homodyne, we've seen many different receiver designs. That's the reason why I don't want to use homodyne here. We have band fast filters, the uh, low pass filters that our, our li limit our bandwidth to B plus B half and minus B half here. And finally, we have a phase rotation stage here. Uh, we have to, this phaser here, I prime and Q prime, is actually not equal to I and Q. Uh, here we had I and Q. Uh, as long as we could cap, keep the generator synchronized, the carrier synchronized between the receiver and transmitter, we only need one single step of processing here. But unfortunately, the real world is a little bit different. The real world, uh, the frequency of the transmitter is slightly different from the frequency of the, of the receiver for different errors, for different reasons. Uh, the circuits are not identical and this is not perfect and it's very difficult to synchronize a radio frequency oscillator. So it's better to keep this one working 
wherever it works hopefully close to the transmitter frequency so this this frequency offset should be much smaller than the bandwidth of the signal but still different from zero now we get i prime and q prime the q prime we, they are not the correct i and q yet and we also only have to rotate them with this phasor rotation stage this is multiplication by cosine multiplication by sine uh, multiplication by sine multiplication by minus cosine uh, to get uh, so this is minus cosine this is sine actually uh, this is uh, this is a phasor rotation uh, the simple rotation matrix using sines and cosines including sines and cosines all this is done at half the modulation bandwidth so all this is done at the modulation bandwidth this all this is done at low frequency uh, in most occasions with today hardware all this uh, phasor rotation is done digitally there are a to d converters here and here and all this is done in the digital world so in the digital world what it means it means that everything can be integrated on a single chip in a zero if qim receiver we need very little filtering here uh, as uh, we need uh, we need it little uh, li little very little fil filtering also uh, uh, here in the weaver receiver or we need it very little radio frequency here here in the image rejection receiver we actually need very little filtering uh, not demanding filtering this and this can be put uh, off the chip or can we even uh, be uh, this can be re totally removed so this stage can be skipped so all this circuit of a 0 am 0 af qam receiver can be integrated on a single chip with just uh, non-linear signal processing components with just transistors on a single chip and that's the big advantage of zero if qam receiver of course uh, other things had to be solved and that's the reason why it took 40 years to solve them uh, 40 years also to have a uh, uh, high degree of integration circuits with high degree of integration with thousands and maybe millions of transistors on a single chip that this could be done on a single chip but this zero with this zero if receiver we could, could integrate a whole uh, gsm mobile phone on a single chip and that's the big advantage the big advantage is the cost advantage the if uh, traditional receivers using if like uh, frequency uh, like frequency modulation FM or uh, AM receivers we had up here the F AM receiver we had here this actually perform better better heterodyne receivers usually perform back better as requiring to interference but uh, zero IF uh, receivers like we have here zero F receivers is much cheaper it can be integrated on a single chip a whole mobile phone can be integrated on the single chip and that's the big advantage of a zero IF receiver and that's the reason why the industry worked hard to have this thing operational unfortunately 40 years after Weaver uh, at in the Weaver times uh, this was built with vacuum tubes and this was very complicated in the integrated circuits uh, era this all this can be integrated on a single chip the slow pass filters can be integrated on a chip only this RF filter maybe an external filter maybe a surface acoustic wave filter maybe a bulk acoustic wave filter maybe something like that in a mobile phone uh, but these are simply uh, uh, RC filters low pass filters RC filters integrated on a single chip so everything can be integrated on a simple chip and that's the reason why the zero IF uh, QAM receiver is so interesting for us in fact there are many practical solutions to build these things and today we get many chips doing exactly the same thing uh, so here I'm showing a rather old 20 years old chip this is for analog from analog devices AD8347 this chip actually includes uh, this chip includes a quadrature mixer a uh, quadrature phase splitter to have local oscillator in quadrature uh, an RF preamplifier to have a good noise figure 
and an output IF amplifier here, there are IF amplifiers. These low pass filters are external. So this is the low pass filter for one I branch and uh, Q branch, Q branch low pass filters. So low pass filters are still external with this chip. They are not on chip. So these two chips, uh, these two filters are external, but I have here I IF amplification, I have RF amplification, and only this one is missing. So this is a typical chip of from 20 years ago. Now in uh, the chips that are being manufactured today, the whole circuit, including this processing that is done in digital A to D converters and then digital signal processing here, all this is integrated on the same chip. And these filters can also be integrated on a chip with older chips like the AD8347, just to show you an example, this is still off chip. But you can achieve better performance with filters of chip and with some discrete components, but most of the rest, including the chip, including the AGC. It, this chip includes a detector and uh, changes the gain of the RF change. The gain of the RF change is adjusted to have the optimum drive of the of the two quadrature mixer, while the gain in the IF stage is kept fixed. So this is uh, talking about radio frequency receivers for radios for wireless communication. But uh, we can apply exactly the same idea also to the highest capacity optical links, not just optical fiber links, not just wire links. And in fact, we have that problem when in optics we have to use more complex communication schemes not for uh, final user access on optics, but for long distance transoceanic cables, we can use also the zero IF principle. And this is uh, and the explanation how this is done today. We get with the light wave signal, of course, with an optical fiber, we can use both polarization and on any single carrier or any single wavelength we use both polarization each polarization with a QAM 16 modulation QAM 16 means 16 levels uh, for a total of 400 gits per second and this is 8 bits per symbol QAM 16 is 4 bits per symbol times 2 polarization is 8 bits per symbol so we have the maximum uh, signal processing of 50 gigabits per second or the I have frequencies below 50 gigahertz. So how we do this? We split the polarization with the polarization beam splitter in two different polarization, horizontal and vertical, inside an optical waveguide. We feed our mixer with a local oscillator that's a distributed feedback laser at 194 terahertz, that's 1550 nanometers of wavelength in free space. Uh, and we build a quadrature mixer here. A quadrature mixer, we split the RF signal here, the, and we split the local oscillator here, and we operate the quadrature, we achieve a phase shift with a longer signal line here. And uh, here longer means uh, at 155 nanometers, this means slightly less than 400 nanometers gives us a 90 degree phase shift here. Finally, we use balanced mixers, uh, including two photodiodes. The response of a single photodiode is quadratic. So uh, the photoelectric electric response of the photodiodes, the output electrical signal, the output electrical voltage is proportional to the optical, uh, optical incoming power. And the optical incoming power is proportional to the square of the optical electric field. So we have a square response in each one. But we also have a source of trouble. This is our local oscillator that has uh, intensity noise. This intensity noise would completely spoil the sensitivity of a single photodiode operating as a mixer. That's the reason why we use balanced mixers with two photodiodes from the optical domain down to the electrical domain and if these photodiodes are balanced we can remove any intensity noise coming from our local oscillator. That's already an advantage and if our local oscillator has a, an accurate enough frequency, though, so the wavelength is accurate enough, uh, this accuracy is maybe sm uh, small enough that it can be processed in electronics. 
So with the four signals we get here, I and Q for vertical polarization, R and I and Q for horizontal polarization, uh, we can correct both the frequency offset, the polarization offset, because polarization may change, and the, the, uh, make a dispersion correction on in, all in inside uh, inexpensive zero IF electronics. This is at relatively low frequencies, below 50 gigahertz. So it can be done with cheap electronics in cheap uh, A to D converters and cheap digital signal processing here. This is the way to do communication over transoceanic distances. 400 gigabits per one channel, but such a transoceanic cable may have uh, 100 channels, so this this may go up to tens of terabits per second for a single transoceanic cable. And this is the only way how can we make YouTube to work, because YouTube, with all the people around the world watching it, they need lots of bandwidth, and we need all this bandwidth, all this signal capacity inside the optical cable. So the same principle of the zero IF receiver we saw up here can be applied both to radio. This is a rather rather old chip designed exactly for this purpose in radio around 20 years ago. And we have also the same state of art technology today is dual polarization or MIMO lightweight technology. We could also use the same MIMO technique also in radio. Of course, we are using in Wi-Fi is using MIMO also in radio. But here we are using MIMO two polarizations um, in optical circuits. So this is uh, the best what we can do actually with our technology and is done in zero F technology. Why? It's hard to process optical frequencies. It can be done. We can do some simple processing at uh, uh, 194 terahertz, but it's very difficult. We can do much more processing in the zero IF frequency range and this zero IF frequency range falls within what electronics can you actually do, what cheap electronics can actually do. And that's the real advantage of zero IF receiver design that's being used now elsewhere from mobi mobile phones to Wi-Fi uh, to digital television broadcast and also to optical fiber communication. Now, uh, the key word today is zero IF. Zero IF QAM receivers that, that's, that's the key word today used practically for all uh, state-of-art communications.